Right, the case for 3DR. Now, let's do the cost thing. The way to save money in Germany is to send all your patients to the UK, because what are you guys paying for drugs? Not as much as in the US, but we pay an awful lot less. And it's not... Actually, our cheapest reasonable option is a three-drug one, but I'm not focusing on cost. Right. The thing for me, and why this is really difficult, is I'm actually a, a reformed two-drug regimen sceptic. And so it took me a long time to sort of remove myself from the shackles of three drugs. But actually, in researching this talk, I've realised that perhaps I was wrong. So... I think we have to remember that we are talking about the old cliché of a David and Goliath situation here. And, of course, you have the Goliath intellect <laughs> and stature of Jürgen Rockstow. And then just little old me. I'm just a sexual health doctor from London. I'm not one of these multi-publishing, ID, researchy type people. I'm just there to, to do what's best for patients. So please remember that. And, of course, the other analogy that's a bit more modern is here I am, tiny little me in, in Brexit Britain, whereas Jürgen has got the whole of the EU <laughs> behind him. Those are actually to scale, as you can probably see. <laughs> but the reality is that there is no success unless it's success for everyone. This is the kind of thing that Chloe would say in one of her talks, that it's got to be everybody. And unfortunately, if you've got a regimen that's got a weak link, then that's not the preferred regimen for everybody. It has to be the best for all. So when we're thinking about 2DR versus 3DR, is 2DR better? Is 3DR better? I think we have to think about all the situations, and Jürgen's mentioned many of these already, where it really is not appropriate to be prescribing two drug regimens. Hepatitis B. Jürgen talked about the benefits of vaccination. We've had vaccination for years, yet there are so many people living with chronic, chronic hepatitis B. NRTI resistance. People with high viral loads, low CD4. Jürgen showed you that slide, glossed over the underperformance of dolutegravir if you low CD4s. Don't worry, I will make sure I dwell on it better. Test and treat. And people with blips and low level viremia. These are all groups of people where really, honestly, hand on heart, would you use two drugs instead of three? So what do the guidelines say? It's well and good what me and you are going to say sat up here. What do the guidelines say? And the only two drug regimen recommended first line compared to many different three drug regimens is dolutegravir and mifudine. But there's lots of buts. You can't have hepatitis B, no resistance mutations, and viral load below 500,000. That's consistent across the US, European, and of course the most important and most robustly evidence-based, the British HIV Association. And actually, because we're so evidence-based, we are the only guideline that commits to the evidence that dolutegravir-lamivudine underperforms at low CD4 counts. So press switch, there's a few more, but it's all dolutegravir, capotegravir injection, of course, boosted PI and lamivudine, and then DHHS recommended dolutegravir durinivir one as well, which no one can afford. And again, with those hepatitis B and resistance caveats, it's all you can use two drugs, but, and that makes me uncomfortable. So we say this, but, 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 you know, above 500,000, it's fine. It's fine. In Gemini, as Jürgen's already shown you, Dolutegulum if we did fine against three drugs at very high viral loads. But look at those numbers. There are fewer numbers in those arms than there are in this room. So I personally wouldn't trust that data. And it's all well and good saying, oh, well, Gemini said it works well. Oh, Gemini said that. Robust, evidence-based guidelines written by panels of experts with input from community members all say no no and no to using dolutegulimifidine, the only two drug reg regimen recommended first line in people with higher viral loads. And Jürgen, I'm nothing if not inclusive, so I've translated this slide for you. Nine. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> And just because Jürgen glossed over this because it didn't fit his contrived argument, here is the CD4 signal. And you can argue about the reasons all you like, but in Gemini, for people with a baseline CD4 count below 200, who are the people we particularly need to make sure do well, two drugs underperformed. Blue for two drugs, orange for three. There was an underperformance, and that's why Beaver, as the most robustly based evidence-based guideline in the world, does not recommend dolutegulimifidine at lower CD4 counts. And it's not the first example. NEAT001. NEAT001, a fantastic study looking at a three versus two drug regimen. There was an underperformance at low CD4 count. So there's a pattern here of two drugs performing less well. And let's see what Beaver have to say, which is a really good lesson in life. If you're ever struggling to make a decision, always have a look at what Beaver have got to say. And we believe when we're thinking of low-level viremia or people with persistent recurrent blips, that a high genetic barrier three drug regimen is to be recommended. Three drugs work even where they shouldn't. 
The Nadia trial, which is a fantastic study in people experiencing virologic failure on tenofovir lamivudine and an NNRTI first line, randomised to tenofovir or zidovudine backbones, dolutegravir versus darunavir. Look at these levels of resistance. In this study of second line treatment, very high levels of intermediate or high resistance to tenofovir, zidovudine and lamivudine. Yet, 92% of people treated with a three drug regimen had an undetectable viral load at week 96. So even in the presence of high levels of NRTI resistance, three drugs perform incredibly well. And on a global level, that's more important than the scope of two drugs. And Jürgen's highlighted two drug regimens are largely based on integrases. So actually, that puts us into a one-size-fits-all category because integrases don't suit everybody. There are CNS side effects for some people. There's a dose-response relationship between dolutegra and insomnia, and we can talk about weight gain and whether it's return to health and return to gain weight like the rest of the world is. There is data showing integrase inhibitors <coughs> are horrible to fat cells, and we need to explore that further. And when you've got all those things in your mind, someone's treatment history, their resistance pattern, do you know their hepatitis B status? Sometimes you have to follow your gut feeling. And if you're not certain, I bet most of you, if you're honest, would choose three drugs over two. Now, the thing with Jürgen is he's funny and he's charming and he's tried it on with me. This is at an EAX dinner. I had to tell him I was married in the end. It got a bit awkward. But he's, ve <laughs> he's very convincing. He's very persuasive. But he doesn't tell the truth. And he reminds me of another man I met in the distant past. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to use the phrase gaslighting lightly, but I, I, there are some real, real resonances here. But he's an expert. You stick that into PubMed. More than 600 results. And I'm not ageist, far from it, but I think we have to accept that, I don't know, things deteriorate with age, Jürgen, don't they? And I think Jürgen's accepted that because his publication rate has tailed off and he's now turned to making marmalade, which is lovely for a man of his years. It's a really lovely hobby. In fact, did you know that he actually won first prize for his orange marmalade, didn't you, darling? And I think, I think that's Jürgen demonstrating the fact that you were at the top of the game maybe 10 years ago, but <laughs> maybe not any longer. So just a reminder that you must choose a regimen that's strong for as many people as possible. And that means there's strength in numbers, and that number is three. So I'll close there. Thank you very much for your kind attention.